Welcome to Market Man Day to Day Training. My name is Chrissy, and I will be guiding you through today's training. In this training, we will cover inventory counts, placing orders, receiving invoices, waste, and transfers. Please note waste is only available on professional accounts, and transfers are only relevant to multi location accounts. Let's get started. Now that we have our items set up, I want to go over inventory counts. To do an inventory count, you can do it here on the Marketman backend, but you can also do it on the app. First, go to inventory counts, and then we can click add count. All of your items in the system will then populate here as long as they're listed for inventory count. You can start off by adding a description. This is really helpful to add in uh, the person who did the count today. So I'll say, Chrissy's count. The next step is the date, today's the 15th, and then day start and day end. Day start is gonna be in the morning before all of your sales or any of your invoices are received, where day end is going to be the opposite as everything has already been received and there are no more sales for the day. You can search for your items, filter by storage area, category, or supplier, but personally, I think filtering by storage area is the easiest. We'll go ahead and click the bar storage area. When filtering by storage area, you'll only see the items that are in this storage area. You can also sort these items. This will allow you to bring them shelf to sheet, just like my bar is listed. So if my rose grenadine is all the way on the top of my bar, then I will pull it up to the top of the bar. To fill out the inventory counts, you'll just fill in the blank here with however many are in the shelf or on the shelf. So for example, I have two liters of rose grenadine, one bottle of my Chambord, and three bottles of my Jack Daniels. One thing to note on this page is if you leave the item blank, Market Man is just assuming you're not counting that day. But if you leave the item with a zero, it knows that it's out of stock. This will then calculate your on-hand value, depending on the pricing of this item and how much you have on hand, and update what you have in stock on hand. You can also upload this sheet if you choose to do it pen and paper. To download, you'll click this little graph here and export count sheet. When you export the count sheet, it will pull up an Excel file of all of your different items. And you can simply fill in everything that you have in stock. It'll come up with the storage areas and you can see the items that I've already put in stock. I could fill out this section with however many I have of each, including the pack sizes. We would then save this to your computer and then upload it into Marketman. To upload it, you're gonna click the same graph here and import count sheet and then choose the file into your computer and press the upload button. It will then update all of these numbers here with whatever was written on that count sheet. It's really important to save your inventory counts as you do them. We suggest saving at least every time you move storage areas. That way none of your data is lost. The next thing I wanna go over is placing orders through Market Man. First, let's head over to the orders dropdown and click place orders. It is really important that you have all of your supplier information filled out, like your rep's phone number and email address before you begin placing orders, because this is where the orders will be sent to. When you open up the place orders section, you will see all of your suppliers populate here. You can pick an individual supplier or filter by all of them. On this screen, you can filter by your suppliers, search for specific items, filter by category or your storage area as well to find any of the items that you need to place. You can see here that your on-hand levels will populate based off your inventory counts and recent purchases as well. You can also set up par levels in this section as well. For my blueberries, I have a par level of my 25 containers. For my cloves, I can set a par level by pressing set and filling in the par that I would like, seven. Now, when I'm not at my par level, 
Markiman will suggest for me to purchase more of these items. So for my blueberries, for example, I have an arrow that suggests I buy 25 more in order to meet my par level requirements. You can also do this in bulk by clicking actions, fill to par, and any of your items that have a par level set will automatically fill accordingly. A cart will then populate with the items that you placed. You can always check your reps information by clicking this little pencil mark here and making sure everything is filled out accordingly. You can add comments in this section about the items to send right to your rep. And then choose your delivery dates and cutoff times. These delivery dates and cutoff times will appear based on what you put in your supplier information and when you can get deliveries. The next, you have just press send. When this order is sent, Markiman will notify you that it was sent. We definitely suggest letting your reps know the first time you place an order through Marketman, just giving them a heads up to say that we are placing this order and to look out for the email or text message. Once the order is placed, you can click into your order history and see all of the orders that were recently placed, the date and when they'll be delivered, and the amount that was being spent as well. For the status section here, I can see that my Grace's grocery was sent today. And when it's viewed by my rep, it will be marked as viewed by supplier with a timestamp. This is a really great way to hold everybody accountable and make sure your reps see your information. If for any reason your rep does not view within a certain period of time, Marketman will send you a notification to check in with your rep to make sure that they got your order. Now that we've placed our orders through Marketman, we want to make sure that we receive all orders into the system. Receiving orders is extremely important for our cost of goods report and making sure our on-hand levels are accurate as well. To receive our orders, we'll click Receive Orders here. If we place the order through Marketman, all of our order history will pop up here and we'll be able to click into the order and then receive with an invoice. To receive with an invoice, you can drop the file right in here, or if you're on the Marketman app, you can simply take a picture and your file will be uploaded when you press receive order for me. If you didn't place the order through Marketman, that's completely okay. We will just click invoice without order on the top here. Choose the supplier in which you place the order for. And then again, be able to drag and drop the image right here or take a picture on the app. We also have the ability to in to enter the invoice manually. Manually entering the invoice will just populate the data yourself instead of having our team populate the data. First thing you want to do is add your invoice number here and the total if there is tax as well. The date in which the payment is due and then you can start searching for the items. Blueberries, and the information here on price will populate based off the most recent price in the system. For me, I ordered three cartons and I did receive three cartons. It's very important to make sure that you match up what you received with what you ordered in case there is any discrepancy. Lastly, we'll wanna make sure that the total here is equal to the total up here. Now, if my price is not equal, then we'll have to look at the price that was charged for the blueberries. If my blueberries were not charged for $8, I can always adjust this price and say that they were $9. I'll then be able to update the price in the system or issue a credit. A credit is if you need to receive money back from the supplier, but otherwise in this case, I just wanna update the price as it is now $9 for my blueberries and then make sure my grand totals match. You can always drop an image of your invoice here as well and write any comments as well. And we'll just click save here to save and update your on-hand levels for your blueberries. This will be instantly uploaded, but when you do take a picture and receive your orders through invoice scanning, it will take at least 24 hours to go into the system. Once your items are received into the system, we can go into our accounting dropdown and click into our invoices. 
This will be a history of all invoices that have been received into the system, whether they were manually received or scanned through invoice scanning. They are manually received, they'll automatically populate here. But invoice scanning, like I said, will take at least 24 hours to populate. And it will show a pending status here if it is still pending. And if for any reason your invoice scan does fail, there'll be details here as to why it failed and if you need to take a new picture and re-upload it into the system. The next thing I wanna go over is irregular pricing. Irregular pricing is the price fluctuation based off your invoices. As prices change, this page will show you if they've gone up or gone down and allow you to update them in the system. For example, my blueberries went up a dollar and I can see in red that it did have a variance and I updated the price. This is now letting the system know that this is the new price for blueberries going forward. I can also see that my ginger beer has gone down a dollar and 30 cents. I can either approve and update the price or reject the price. Most of the time you are going to update the price by clicking update price, but rejecting the price will come in if this is a completely wrong price, maybe it's an error, or if this was a one-time deal that you got from your supplier as well, and you don't want it to update into the system. Once the prices are updated, you can then look at the price change report. The price change report will show the fluctuation of prices over time. For example, from $19.30 to $18. This is a really great tool to show to your suppliers and to look at price changing over time to make sure you're getting the best price for all of your items. The next thing I wanna cover is waste events. By going to the inventory dropdown and clicking waste events, this is a great way to keep track of any over-purchasing or spoiling that could happen within your restaurant. For example, all of my current waste events are populated here. To create a new waste event, click new waste event. This can also be done on the app, which is very convenient. It will bring up all of the items that I have in the system, both entrees, menu items, purchased items, sub recipes as well. We can pick the date and the description. There's a few auto-populated descriptions here, like if something was dropped or broken, if it was the end of the day, spoiled, on the house, personal use, returned, um, or just any type of issue that could happen where you are throwing away food. You can also fill in other and write in a description yourself. To log a waste event, you will just fill it out similar to doing an inventory count. For example, I dropped an Aperol spritz. So one Aperol spritz, and then the value is calculated dollar amount that was lost based on how much it cost me to make my Aperol spritz. We can also do this with purchase items, like for example, my apples. I had four apples that have gone bad as well. We can go ahead and add our description we'll say spoiled and expired and press view as draft. This will then list out all of the waste events from this day. We can save it into the system. The last thing I wanna cover for today is our support. By clicking this green question mark here, you can live chat with any of our support members and also search our Zendesk for articles and how-to videos that are super helpful as you go through your day-to-day -day of setup of market management.